everyone, and welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. We are here with Dave Schneider, and we're going to be talking today about all kinds of interesting things, including shortlist.io. We're going to be talking about growing a business and selling it, running an agency, software as a service, and even maybe some COVID-19 out there, as long as it's not too scary. So Dave, how's it going today? I'm doing really well. Uh, I've been, you know, uh, just n- not going too many places because of the quarantine, but uh, overall, kind of uh, enjoying the nicer weather we're having. Yeah, you can't control it, so you make the best of it. And uh, and yeah, so as far as, as you and what you have going on, I mean, uh, you've been stuck in quarantine, as you say, and making the best of it, but what specifically has you fired up? What kind of projects? What is on your mind? What is your passion these days? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, as uh, do I think most entrepreneurs, you never have just one thing, right? <laughs> Even though you're supposed to only have one, but um My main thing is shortlist.io. That's a digital marketing agency. Um, And we do a bunch of services, design and dev and SEO. Um, And that's been going great. I've been running that for about two years or so with a remote team. Um, And then we're just launching two software products, actually. Uh, One of them is a... Ooh, did we miss uh oh are you back i am back did i freeze all right you dropped out for about a minute yeah <laughs> as soon as as soon as we you started talking that's so weird yeah uh okay do you want me to repeat that or something yeah well we'll cut it out we'll make it work cool um <clears throat> so i think your question was yeah what do i have kind of going on and yeah, I have a bunch of things uh, going on, actually. Um, my main thing is shortlist.io, which is a digital marketing agency. We do design and dev and link building and conversion rate optimization. Uh, but we're also launching two software products. Uh, one of them is a an SEO tool that we used internally, and we just started to commercialize it. And another is a tool for remote work and running more effective meetings. So both of those products are going to be out pretty soon. And I'm really pumped about that. Super cool. And, I, and I'm with you in that there's there's somewhat of a do as I say, not as I do with all these successful people giving advice because they, they do say have your focus, but you think about even like Facebook is kind of the prime example of, oh, just have one thing, but Facebook has Instagram, Facebook has Oculus Rift, Apple has all their kind of, there's the main things that make the money, but then there's the new fringe project. So that way there is not a gap. That way if they sell something or if, one of those parts of the business goes by the wayside, then they don't have to scramble and spend years getting something else going. So I'm completely with you in that there is sometimes having focus on the main project, but then also having uh, some uh, some additional fun projects in the background. And so kind of jumping into some of these things, so shortlist.io, you said that you do things like link building and SEO. So why is it a a shortlist and what makes you guys different? (laughs) Yeah, so... uh... I'll be honest, I've never been uh, much for branding. Um, you know, my, my previous software business, uh, Ninja Outreach, uh, basically my partner and I just came up with a list of words um, that we thought could potentially make for a software. And then we just combined Ninja and Outreach. Um, Shortlist uh, was a similar type of experience uh, with my partner. Um, I said, well, what domains do you already have handy? And he said, I have Shortlist. Um, I think it would be good. And so we, we said, yeah, that sounds great. Um, but it does sort of uh, incur, I guess, a little bit of this idea of, hey, we're going to kind of shortlist you on the search engines. We're going to kind of get you ahead of the line. Um, and so it does actually kind of fit in that scenario. Um, but what I think is, is different about, about us is, well, I, I do think it's adherence to quality. Um, and I know that this is probably a line that people have heard before. Um, but in the link building niche, there really is quite a lot of um, a lack of quality standards. Um, number one, part of that is because many people just don't know what they're getting. Um, and so you know, they don't necessarily even know how to judge what quality is. So there's a little bit of that knowledge gap with, with many businesses when they order links, they think, okay, I'm going to order links. I'm going to, I'm going to increase my rankings, but how do I know what links are good and which ones aren't? And that kind of gives the agencies a lot of power to basically kind of give them whatever. 
Um, so that, that's kind of a big problem. Uh, but we look at a lot of different uh, metrics when we when we grade our websites. It's not just domain authority, which is kind of one of the big ones that people look at, but we're also looking at the organic traffic that the website gets, its trust flow, its citation flow. Um, basically, this is a link that you know you'd actually be proud to kind of get one from. Um, and that is really kind of what differentiates us, and that's why we haven't had clients, you know, get dinged by Google or anything like that. Everything's really been really solid, white hat all all around. Fantastic. And so your point there about you use the name you have, the name doesn't matter much. I agree as well. I mean, we mentioned Google. What the heck is a Google anyway, right? What, what's a Yahoo? What's an Alta Vista? And so, uh, and also there's always, I mean, say you build up your agency or you build up your company and then you decide, well, here's a better name. I can always like rebrand, but when do you really need to do that? And so you mentioned these things about how uh, companies come to you and they, they order links and they get uh, you know the, these better listing in search engines. Do, so people, they come to you with existing websites and they're looking to get better rankings and traffic. Are those like the usual people or are there other types of people that come to you? That's the most common. Yeah, the most common is somebody has a website, they're ranking, they're kind of want to um, basically improve, you know, the ranking, get more traffic, and uh, eventually that leads to, you know, more sales and, and whatnot. Um, the difference is often in the state uh, that the website is in, to the maturity level. Um, sometimes people come and they're a very new website and they think, well, I don't have any traffic, so I guess I should do link building. It's time for me to kind of get started on that. And other times people come and they're actually pretty mature and they have some content that's been ranking well and they're already on page two, but they're trying to kind of get it on on, on page one and things like that. Um, the latter scenario is definitely more preferable. Um, sometimes somebody comes with a very new website and I honestly will just turn away the business because I don't feel like we're going to be able to add a lot of value there. Um, you know, you have to kind of do a little bit of the hard work of writing content, getting it to rank initially before you really have something to kind of push over over the edge. You know, just buying some links is not really going to generate a lot of traffic to a new website. Um, on the other hand, you know, a website that's mature, has a lot of content, already can tell where they're ranking, what keywords are important for them. They know where they're focused, they have a goal in mind, and it really just makes sense to add some extra links to basically kind of give them that push over the edge. Okay, great. And so we've been throwing out a lot of different uh, kind of terms here about like how, uh, like does the site have a lot of content or how mature it is and things like keywords. When these websites, these companies come to you, is there any educating that's, that's needed or do they kind of already know what they want? Again, it always depends on the client. I mean, there are some that really they they know what they're uh, what they're working towards. Um, they know that they have maybe a marketing manager on their team, and so they have a, a very set idea of what they would like to basically uh, accomplish, and what posts they want to promote, and what keywords are important to them, and things like that. We have other ones that are not so much as informed, and they look for us to basically kind of give them a little bit of that research, that guidance, um, which we do. Um, because again, it's our job at the end of the day to kind of give them results. And so if we're not exactly kind of doing the research um, on their behalf and letting them know what we, what we recommend, then it's not really going to go, go well for either them or us. Um, so yeah, it does, it does really depend and I don't know, it can be like 50, 50, to be honest. Okay, fair enough. And I mean, as you know, there are different levels of awareness, right? There are some people that come to you and they know exactly what they want. Some are almost there. And then you have some people that maybe they know they want better traffic. They know they want better rankings, but they maybe need to get caught up enough about some of the these link building uh, concepts and some of the like the processes before coming to you. So do you have like some kind of free resource like that to get people up to speed about link building or like a, a book or a course or something you provide or something like that to give people all of that information? Yeah, I wish that was a segue to uh, some sort of product or something I was promoting, but it, but unfortunately, no, uh, we, we don't have anything like that. Although there are copious amounts of the, that type of information on the web, you know, trustworthy sources like backlinko.io, uh, .com, excuse me, um, Brian Dean, you know, he, he, he's got a great blog on SEO and we'll kind of cover the basics. And I think it is important, you know, certainly if you're ever going to kind of work with uh, an agency or partner or something like that, that you also know, uh, you know, the, 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 the basics, the ins and outs. Um, so you'll be more informed to kind of, you know, uh, optimize uh, that, that campaign. Um, so unfortunately, yes, we don't have uh, any of our own resources yet, but there are definitely plenty out there for free. But yeah, but Brian Dean would be good for someone to just get some of that that knowledge drip, so that way they will be prepared for you. And what kind of 
price point are we talking about? Is this like an ongoing monthly thing, one-time thing? How does, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't even know how you would even begin to crack that nut of, you say, well, here's what we want the results to be. Here's what the work would be. How, what's even the, the price range on that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, uh, just to your point about, you know, cracking that nut and things like that, it obviously, it, it depends a lot on, I mean, nobody knows exactly, you know, how many links to get to the, to get to, you know, number one, you know, sort of the licks to the center of the Tootsie Pop uh, analogy, like no, nobody really knows exactly. Um, we can kind of give estimations using different tools and kind of say, well, it looks like you're going to need maybe 20 links or something like that um, to do it, but it's always a bit of trial and error. Um, so in terms of pricing, you know, we, we're very, um, we try to be very flexible. I don't like to have people in contracts, um, or long-term, you know, situations or even necessarily monthly. It's not necessarily, none of that's really needed. We just ask for a minimum of three links, which just kind of justifies us to kind of get in there and do the research and stuff like that. Um, we put our pricing on the, on the website, um, it, because again, I don't like to hide behind a schedule a call with a salesman or something like that. And I think people should kind of know what, more or less what they're getting into uh, before kind of committing the time. So, you know, for us, you know, the links have different tiers, you know, based on, is it, you know, is it a good link or is it a great link, obviously. Uh, but we, we usually range, uh, I think it's between like $150 and $350 a link, uh, which includes the content as well and all, all the work that kind of goes into it. Um, which from my experience, just kind of seeing other agencies and things like that seems to be about average. Um, there are definitely cheaper ones and there are definitely more expensive ones. Well, super cool. And so uh, I know that we, we only have a, a few minutes in a, a short window of us having this conversation, but this is an, an interesting peek into your thought process. And, and I'm kind of the same way, like if I need a specific service done for my business and I see that there's no pricing page and they want me to do a call, it's like, well, I understand that if I want something custom or if I want something out of the scope, then there's custom, but I want to know like about what the, the pricing is, or maybe I want to jump in on just some, some usual thing that you do every single day. And I want to know what that price is. And then, but I understand that there might be a phone call, but it's like kind of give, give me both. So that way, maybe I, I think in one way or, or think in the other way. And so, uh, so this is kind of interesting to get, get a little bit of a peek into the way you run things as far as your agency. But I also want to make sure that we have time to talk about these two SaaS software as a service tools that you mentioned earlier, the search engine optimization tool and then the, the uh, kind of work tool, because I, I imagine that they might uh, kind of feed the other businesses. But I also imagine that there's different pros and cons for the, the agency versus the, the SaaS. So can you just tell me your thoughts on that or unpack some of that? Yeah, for sure. I, I think you, you've definitely touched upon some of the, the finer points of, of, you know, obviously there are pros with a SaaS model because it is sort of monthly recurring. Um, you have users that usually pay like a monthly subscription um, and uh, they don't necessarily require the same level of hands-on work um, to be done with an agency client because they're supposed to just be using the tool and kind of uh, self-servicing. Um, so that is definitely a benefit um, to, to that model. And you also mentioned, uh, I think that, you know, there's this idea that it could feed the agency, which is also true, which is that, you know, if you have a, a tool out there and there's a user base, those are also customers that could eventually be interested in agency services and links and things like that. So it's supposed to kind of all, all work together in, in that, in that area. Um, the cons are mainly that software is expensive. <laughs> it's expensive to build. Um, there's quite a lot of competition um, these days, more than ever. Um, you know, certainly uh, we're not the only uh, search engine tool on the market. We're not the only tool for remote work. Um, so fighting through that noise um, is, is, is tricky. Um, my background, you know, my first business was really a SaaS business. Um, and that was great. That was back in like 2014 and it was tough then, but I think it's gotten a lot more difficult now. So we'll, we'll kind of see obviously how, how it goes, but um, you know, the, the reason we kind of approach it in this way um, was to, you know, build the agency, which kind of gives you the team and, and everything to kind of promote um, and, and develop and market these two products. And that, that's, what's a little bit different. And to go back to the very you know first question about focus, that's really what's even making the whole thing possible because if it was just me, trying to kind of individually launch two software products and run an agency, um, all three of them would just fall on their face. It just would never work. Um, but uh, if I can kind of work to, to build the team and kind of manage the team and they can kind of uh, in turn, you know, run the products and things like that, that model is a bit more, you know, a bit more reasonable. 
And what I'm hearing from you is, I mean, two things. One is the that idea of the do things in the order of importance, and then the other idea of that maybe you might have to be involved early on in in building things up or in kind of tweaking the systems. Uh, but it's so important to to kind of get things propped up so that they run themselves because. I think it's really tempting. It would be tempting on day one to say, well, cool, I'll work on all these projects at once, right? I'll work from eight to nine on the agency. I'll work from nine to 10 on this project, 10 to 11 on that project. And that's just it, that would have been a recipe for having a lot of things not done. But then it, it seems like from hearing a little bit of your story, you, you built up the agency, right? You got the monthly recurring clients and maybe there were some growing pains there, but you figured out how to maybe get that to run itself, how to get... Uh, you know, figure out how you wanted it done and then get people to do the work for you. And then once that runs, then you kind of move into the the software project where it's uh, like like you said, software is not as, as easy as it sounds, right? There's all kinds of debugging, things break, things being maintained. Uh, so that takes a while to maybe even get profitable or even get working. But then ideally, once that is a well-oiled machine, then you can move on to, to the next thing. And I, I hear similar stories like that so often that it's like they make the agency first they get the clients first that provides the baseline income that pays the bills and then once that kind of runs itself then there's then you can do the kind of more play fun projects but sometimes they're the pro the they they solve the problems that you didn't know you had until you were servicing these clients and having having this agency so it's like one thing one solution leads to the next problem and then that you solve that but then it leads to the next problem and i mean that's it sounds it's a little bit chaotic but that's kind of the entrepreneurial path right yeah i mean you nailed it you know like this like i said the the search engine tool that we're putting out there is something that we used internally to kind of to solve our own problem and then we said well maybe we can kind of commercialize it and so you know it's still a hypothesis that other people will benefit from this but at least there's some sort of uh logic behind why why we're kind of putting out this tool it wasn't something we just came up out of thin air but it, it served a need for us internally and then we kind of put it out in the agency first model i think you know obviously to each his own like the first time i just went straight for software that was good but um, it was, it was, you know, it was stressful. It was hectic. It was like a lot of money up front and, and, and all this stuff and sort of the building the agency path, um, is a little bit more of a roundabout slower way of eventually maybe getting to the same thing. Um, but, um, it's just a, a bit more, I guess, stable, you know, you usually don't have to put up a lot of money to run a services based business and you can kind of build a team around it. You get to interact with the clients, learn about their problems, and then, you know, hopefully take those, those ideas and then put them into maybe like a product or a course or something like that. That's a little more self-service. Yeah, and yeah, what one thing leads to the next. And is there anything that you wish that you had had known starting out? I mean, there's probably a million things, but there, is there one thing that really stands out that you think, oh, if I'd known this years ago, things would have been so much simpler? Uh, years ago, I would say my biggest thing would have just been knowing that it takes a really long time to build a sustainable business. Uh, that's just my experience uh, in the experience of people that I've talked to. Um, and so, you know, if you're early entrepreneur, first time, and you know, so you're not kind of hitting the home run right, right off the bat, it's like totally normal. Uh, it just takes time. So the key is to kind of, you know, just keep, keep at it. Um, you know, don't go all in, uh, unless, you know, you just, you're all about it. Um, and then eventually, uh, the, I, as things kind of fall into place, I think you, you get the experience, you make the right connections and, and it becomes a bit more realistic to kind of get to, you know, where you always wanted to be, but it, it takes more like four years instead of one year. Right. I agree completely that the, you, you can, you can have a business starting from day one and you could make some money, but making it sustain itself, that that's the key. And it's like, Patience isn't quite the right word because patience implies waiting around. But but yeah, you see so many people that they they fail because they're like, well, I've been at this for six months, or or even worse, maybe they've been at it for so many years, but they haven't been putting in the time and the work for for it. Like they haven't been, maybe they still have the day job, they haven't been coming home and putting in, you know, five hours after that. They put in thirty minutes and then they wonder why they don't have the results. And I mean, I've been full time for almost eleven years now, and uh, I. I spent a few years when like I could have quit, but I kept the day job income while doing the other thing. And some people made fun of me and I thought, well, I'm being strategic, right? I, I'm yeah. I'm making sure that this thing is solid, that then this thing is running before jumping ship. And uh, but but you're also so right that 
sometimes you have failure, 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 and then you keep going and you, you see it till the end. And then so, sometimes some projects don't work out and some of them uh, do. And uh, but but it is a lot of fun, right? It is. Yeah, I've really enjoyed. Um, yeah, the, the lifestyle, the team, uh, you know, things I've learned and the people that I've met. Um, and I mean, you know, maybe it's not for everybody and that's totally fine. Uh, but it's something, you know, to think about. Well, fantastic. And as we're uh, wrapping up, winding down and about to to plug some resources, help people where to go, I want to make sure that, that we co- uh, circle back around to the, the COVID-19, coronavirus, coronavirus, quarantine stuff. And we mentioned it a little bit, but do you have any uh, advice or things that you think that you're doing really well as far as running your business during this time? Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Uh... I've never run a business in a recession before, uh, to be honest. Uh, like, you know, I, I didn't start anything in like 08 or 09. So this is new for me, even though I've been doing things for a number of years. Um, I'm playing a little defensive, basically, because I know that, you know, this is going to be kind of a difficult time. People are maybe not going to be spending like they were before. They're not going to be investing in marketing and things like that. So, you know, I'm looking at the costs, our efficiencies, ways that we can kind of improve that. Um, you know, even just looking at, you know, the payment processor we use, is there someone who's giving better rates or something like that, just anywhere where we can kind of save a little bit of money. Um, and then I think the key is really to just kind of, uh, stay in the game, right? Because, uh, if you do, you know, when we get out of this and we will, if it's a year or whatever, or two from now or something like that, um, you know, not everybody will be around, unfortunately. Uh, but, um, that does mean that, you know, you'll kind of, uh, be stronger because there'll be less competition. So. Yeah, and the and in the meantime, the world will not stop, and it seems like you are in a good position with having uh, SEO and this remote work software. I mean, remote work is blowing up right now, right, with Cisco and Microsoft and Google and Cisco and all the, these places. And so, so yeah, even if the there if there is a recession happening or a slowdown, it's not an excuse to just give up and wait it out. I mean, keep keep making the money. You have to pay your bills uh, somehow. And, and speaking of companies paying their bills, growing their business, getting those backlinks, getting those rankings. Can you tell us about your website, where people should go after listening to our conversation and what they can find there? Absolutely. Um, our, our digital marketing website is shortlist.io. Uh, we also have a page on that website where you can sign up for the search engine software that I mentioned. Uh, the remote software is not out yet. It's still a work in progress, but hopefully it'll be out soon. It's called Relote, uh, R-E-L-O-T-E dot com. Um, so thanks a lot, Robert, for, uh, for the plug and for letting me talk to your audience today. Well, thank you, Dave. Well, I, I hope people got some interesting either insights or reminders or ahas or even just things to think about. And then in the meantime, everyone should go to shortlist.io. That's, that's S-H-O-R-T-L-I-S-T dot I-O, just like it sounds. Go to shortlist.io and find out about their agency. And if you're interested in, in that SEO software or the Reload software, when it's available, you can click on that software tab. And in the meantime, if you have any questions for Dave about if you think his agency is the right fit for you or about ranking or about backlinks or any of that, there is a contact us tab at the top right of shortlist.io. So we will see you there. And thanks, Dave, for stopping by and being real and telling us what we need to know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert.